Hey, Arpet, how are you? Nice to see right. you. Thank and you. it's, yeah, it's great to follow some really nice technical talks and, and give you all a little bit of, of a break from that because this is almost the opposite. Um, let me just introduce myself first and then we'll get into the cool stuff. So first of all, I'm Jacob, as Arpit said, I currently work at Equinix where I lead a variety of efforts around um, our bare metal and as a service offerings. So people might know Equinix as the world's largest data center company, uh, but we're increasingly being asked to operate infrastructure uh, on behalf of our customers who are putting stuff everywhere, as it were. Uh, my journey into the cloud followed the normal route through you know, uh, classical music and arts management and internet marketing. I guess that's a normal route for some people. Uh, everyone finds their way to the cloud somehow. Uh, but one of the uh, things I co-founded um, was a company called Packet. Uh, we, we were acquired by Equinix in 2020. But another close to my heart is the State of the Edge Report, which is what I'm going to talk to you about today, which uh, a group of us started in 2018. And we joined the Linux Foundation and LF Edge community uh, back in 2020. So we're going to get a little bit started, but here's the rundown. We only got a couple minutes. So we're going to go through a little bit of the history and the purpose of the State of the Edge and then give you a little bit of a preview about what we're working on for this year's report, which is going to be released out in May. And then, of course, an invitation to be involved because this is an open effort and one that benefits from um, diverse voices. So just a little bit of background first, for those of you who don't know, uh, we got started in late 2017 and issued our first report in 2018. And it really was about being open and collaborative and trying to move the um, edge computing industry forward uh, by finding, you know, first an answer to an obvious question. How do we use common language? How do we define edge computing? And we had many of us who grew up with cloud, you know, experienced the many ways in which people interpreted what cloud meant to them. And so with the, you know, example here today, I think the presentation show how you know, deeply integrated and collaborative edge computing need, needs to be, you know, it's, it's, it's inherently, uh, um, you know, forced to be interoperable and, and diverse and have lots of different opinions. And so we saw a need to kind of bring the conversation together and to add some clarity uh, around, you know, first of all, like terms and terminology, but also get a shared understanding. So a group of us and companies like, uh, you know, a packet at the time, Vapor.io, uh, Ericsson, Arm, launched the um, State of the Edge report as a open community initiative, not, not vendor focused, right? So vendor neutral. And, you know, we've now published three annual reports. You're welcome to go read them. They're at the stateoftheedge.com. I think there are many of them, you know, have stood the test, test of time. <laughs> and that's always fascinating in a, in a quick moving space like edge computing. Um, but we really approach each uh, annual report with a sense of what does the community need and what are we talking about? What is everyone thinking about right now? So we're part of the um, LF Edge community. We're currently in the growth stage as a project. So that's level two. Um, which means that we have governance and we have um, process and there's ways to get involved formally, which I'll talk about at the end. If you want to look up our definition of edge computing, which is actually, you know, still, you know, an evolving conversation, you can kind of see, uh, it, you know, one of the subparts of our project is the uh, open glossary of edge computing. And it has a, a huge number of terms that are kind of shared across the projects. So before I get into the research we're doing now, like, why is edge computing so fascinating? And I was just listening into the presentation by Google Cloud and we have Kubernetes and, 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 and application and it kind of speaks to my interest in it, uh, which is that you know, it's, it requires such a level of programmability and automation as we look at how we put, put, put things everywhere or in proximity to everything. And so I like to reference this slide, like you know, over the last two decades, we've all really worked through the open, open source community and of course, lots of others to sort of move from, does it have an API? Generally, the answer was no, uh, when a lot of us started our careers to generally the answer is yes. <laughs> and I think that's just such an awesome opportunity to invite more innovation and more things in. And so the edge computing space, while means different things to different people uh, and has different entry points and everyone's edges are kind of different. It's just an awesome um, next phase for what I think we all practiced, you know, over the last you know decade in cloud. Okay, so about the report, um, I'm gonna preview last year, you can get a sense of what we worked on. And again, this is driven by the group. So we have a, an oversight committee and a research committee. Um, we kind of get together and, and, and survey you know, various companies and, and um, uh, member projects and, and people in the community who, who, who volunteer to say what's, what's on the mind. And 
you know, last year we, we did carry forward some really interesting market sizing, um, you know, primary research that we did led by Phil Marshall at Talaga. And that was really helpful in sort of just, you know, starting the debate around, you know, what's the size of this market? You know, what, what is edge computing as an economic engine and as a, as a spend category? So definitely encourage you to check out that data, which we updated in last year's report from a previous um, 2020 kind of stab. And it's really fascinating to see how that's tracking. We also looked at a variety of different infrastructure components. Um, what we decided to do this year is a little different. And so I think ARPET teased it. What, one of my favorite things is thinking about what's maybe missing, right? And so the idea of the rural economy, not only in the United States where remote working really kind of redefined our last two years and put an emphasis on some of the, I'd say, you know, unsexy, but totally relevant aspects of edge computing, which is how do we help users to do more things in more places or how do those devices um, and, and all the various things we've been talking about as use cases really play out as we stretch um, the consumer and push them into, you know, remote first world like we did over the last two years. But also thinking about regions that have limited connectivity, thinking about emerging markets in Africa and South South America as part of our edge, right? As, as part of our uh, need to work everywhere. And so that's a really interesting part of this year's report that we're working on. Another one, which I actually suggested to the group and there was a little bit of a chuckle to start, but you know, it's tongue in cheek data centers in space, but we are seeing, you know, significant efforts by, you know, obviously SpaceX and, and Amazon and others, um, you know, to, to extend our networks into orbit and to do them in a way that's rigorous and scalable. And I think we're seeing the impacts of that, the risks, obviously the learnings, and it's hard to ignore that we have, um, we have computing you know, in space and the ability for that to in, in influence what we do on a terrestrial level is really fascinating. One thing that, that the previous talk mentioned, and I, I, I listened to a few others earlier in the day, is this sense and you can feel how important the cloud is to edge. Right? And so born in the cloud, moved to the edge is looking at that cloud native approach. Obviously there's a huge amount happening there in terms of, it was really, really funny to listen to the previous talk and say, you know, well, no, Kubernetes, you know, the standard, because a few years ago when we were starting this report and many of us were, that, that was not quite the case. It was, it was emerging. <laughs> and so the pace of innovation with um, cloud is really pushing a lot of best practice. And I think especially stretching the um, needs we have of, of software builders and software operators as we, we deal with very uncloud-like environments <laughs> at the edge and kind of cloudify everything as an experience. And that kind of brings out some of these, you know, to, to, to the perspective of an Equinix, which is obviously interested in the physicality of the internet. Um, first of all, and first and foremost, the connectivity of the internet, uh, which, is, which is changing, right? The sort of geography of the internet or the shape of the internet is evolving as we stretch into you know, second and third tier markets, uh, fill in different parts of the globe. You know, many companies, including ours, are expanding heavily into Africa and into India and, and, and filling out our infrastructure. But the shape of that and what, what used to be the football cities of the internet is, is quickly becoming um, a longer list. And you know, that's made possible through you know, ease of deployment, for sure, but also just the, the critical nature of connectivity um, to this challenge right? and then the, 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 the pressures that, you know, new experiences and new um, economic drivers, you know, for instance, with retail or, or IOT, which are two really good examples, are, are moving and shaping the internet and changing the way in which we're building it. Um, so that, that's an interesting evolution that I think um, we'll touch on in the report and sort of leave to some of the, you know, broader analyst community to give all the really fascinating data. Um, so if you're interested in being involved, here's how it works. It's quite simple. Um, you can go to the project page, lfedge.org. Uh, State of the Edge will be listed there. And you can join our working group. Obviously, we're pretty well in flight for the 2022 report, which will come out in May. Um, but it's not too late to, first of all, help. Um, help us edit. Help us make it better. Um, uh, help us with contributing. Uh, we have a variety of essays that you know people with points of view can submit and bring uh, into the report. And then help us to... Um, to take forward the conversation and prepare for, for what's already on deck for next year. So if you're interested in, in having your voice heard or having your company's perspective 
kind of at the table, I would encourage you to join. Um, it's a very collegial group, and we we have a good time working with um, a series of professional authors who help us do, frankly, the heavy lifting of writing words down on the page, which uh, we really appreciate. Um, if you're interested, I would really encourage you to go take a couple minutes. We have the reports are free. There are four of them now, so three annual reports and one special report on data at the edge. Uh, they are big. They are not quick reads. So I think we always start the uh, project with the intention carpet of uh, keeping it short, and then it always ends up being more robust than we thought. And so some of them are pretty significant reads, um, you know, but but really valuable perspectives, and I think some some great research in there, primary and secondary, that you you can take advantage of. So I'll leave it at that, Art, but I think we might be just right around the right time. Yeah, know? yeah, no, that's that's excellent. Uh, thank you, thank you, Jacob. And again, you know, if there are questions, please ask on the Q and A button. Uh, we do have one question, Jacob, uh, which is in the State of Edge report, is there any mention on how it's uh, uh, about how it is going? Uh, do I'm assuming they're saying doing doing yeah. the Mac, Mac Federation, right? So yeah, uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I think standards is kind of what's behind that. How are we, you know, obviously we're not a standard setting body, but we did try to bring together some common language and terminology. What we do have is a section which is about the community. So that's really about, you know, giving voice to first of all other projects at the LF Edge, which are playing, you know, an important role in the edge ecosystem. But then other uh and we've been in touch with various working groups of, you know, different um industry groups in the past and invited them to to add their voice. I think Patricia, you asked a great question, which is like, this is exactly why we need collaboration involved in the report. So we can say, hey, maybe we should, you know, include in this kind of industry, what's become an industry piece, you know, the perspective of, um, you know, the GSMA task force, for instance. So I think that's a great idea. Uh, don't know if it's on the report list right now for this year, but join join the calls you know yeah i think i think the report is is a good output from the community on a sort of what i call the wikipedia style definition of edge yeah, exactly. and, and where it's going uh, but i think from a project and work task force perspective perspective lf edge has very formal collaboration with gsma uh, you know opg as well as all of the edge work that's going on uh, and you will hear a little bit more on Thursday uh, when, when Henry speaks here with uh, NGMN. So uh, clearly standards and open source, as I even mentioned in my talk, critical right. and very mind, important, yeah. top of mind. But uh, excellent. Thank you very much, Jacob. And we really appreciate your uh, insights and your leadership in, in, in driving the community towards standard definitions and terminologies and and directions right i mean it's one thing to have a code as a de facto standard but it's yeah, another exactly. thing to have a document as a de facto standard yeah no see we're not running ci on the report yet but we're, we're hoping <laughs> one day yeah cool thank you very much nice to see you okay